Cheers, everybody. We're all 21, by the way. Or actually, we're all 22. 22. No, no you're no, loser. Don't say that to me. But you know, I'm sensitive about it. You know, I'm sensitive. Wah, wah, wah. I don't want to hear it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 25 of the Coconut Curry Podcast, the first episode we've ever filmed outside on this glorious day in Ooh, Pittsburgh, PA. Yes. We take them while we can. Oh, I never thought I'd hear glorious day in Pittsburgh, PA in my life. It is officially 69 degrees outside. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Lovely, lovely for the start time of the pod. <laughs> um, totally planned. On this episode, we're going to be giving our disgruntled moments of the week like we do every week. We're going to discuss some recent big NBA games. Talk about Jason Kelsey, the Philly legend, the king of South Philly retiring, and break down the NFL free agency, which the franchise franchise tag period just ended a couple hours ago. So we'll have a lot to talk about. But before we do that, we are the Coconut Curry Podcast, just three guys at college going to school at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Justin. We have Raj and Peter here as well. Like we said, if you're on audio, then you don't know. But if you're on video, we are outside. We usually don't film outside, but we yeah. got to take advantage of the warm weather, mm-hmm. but not hot weather while yes, we can. The, literally the perfect temperature. It's like you right in between like the shorts and sweatshirt kind of weather. Like, oh, it's yeah. so good. Especially when you're in the shade, you can like wear the hoodie. Exactly. You're, just, you're totally fine. You're not, like, you're not sweating and like walking to class. It's God, absolutely mm-hmm. beautiful. Um, and we're just we just chat about sports. Hopefully, offer new perspectives. We also give some insights to our personal life, especially yes. with our disgruntled moment of the week segment. So, if you've gotten this far, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. We we're on the road to a hundred subscribers. Casino, please. <laughs> please, please, please get us to a hundred before please. we graduate. Uh, graduate here, so. or before we go to Nashville, please. I need the money. <laughs> okay, buddy, we're gonna need like a million views before then. Okay, but we could use the money. <laughs> um. We always start off by reacting to comments. Um, we didn't have that many comments this past week, but I Shocking. someone actually offered a like comprehensive take, and there was like it poses a question. So really? I wanted to read it in its entirety. Okay, so, let's hear it. Um, on Instagram? On in, on yeah, on Instagram. No way! Wow, people can form sentences. <laughs> yeah, I know. And if you're watching on video, I'm sorry. I keep looking off this way. We don't have a table. Um, he said, "Quote: I have a question. Shouldn't most of the pressure be on the Nuggets because they are already the defending champs, or the Clippers, who have two stars getting older and have been there for four to five years now and have nothing to show for it? Celtics have pressure, but their core outside of Drew Holiday is all below thirty years old. So that's a valid. It's, take. A, it's a valid take. Um, appreciate the. I have a question. Yeah, a portion of that it was like very well, <laughs> very well take. spoken. Yeah. My first reaction when I saw this was." Only 13 teams in NFL and NBA history have ever gone back to back. The last team to do it was the 17 18 Warriors, and that was like six, five, that was six like years a ago. super team, too. So, yeah. and that was with KD, Steph, and something we've never seen before. Yeah. And then it was, before that, it was the Heatles. Mm-hmm. So, um, I would say there's not that much pressure on the Nuggets just because they would put themselves in a class of NBA teams that are up there all time. Like every team yeah. that goes back to back is some of the best teams ever. You think about both the Bulls teams, mm-hmm. uh, the Lakers in the early 2000s, the Miami Heat who won back to back, the Warriors. Like these yeah. are massive teams that yeah. have just ran r- like ran the league for those time frames. Mm-hmm. So if the Nuggets do win, they get to put themselves in a, a class of all time greatness, Yeah, especially in a really like loaded NBA right now. But it really doesn't feel like they like, obviously they're defending champs, but it doesn't really feel like they have anything to lose at this point. Cause like, going back to back just is so unbelievably difficult and like even the idea of like oh yeah well if they don't go back to back they're not good anymore it's like no that's ridiculous like if they make it a deep playoff run and then just things just don't go their way that just happens yeah it's sports i think it's a bad look if they lose in the first round oh absolutely i don't think anybody thinks they're losing in the first round no so unless they lose in the first round i think they're fine um and then as as it goes for the um, so I think the Nuggets have pressure, obviously, like any yeah. back-to-back team should, but they don't have pressure to win at all. The Clippers absolutely have a ton of pressure. We've talked yeah. about it a lot. They, um, you said two aging s- stars on that. They have really they have three, four, yeah. four, if you four, want to count yeah. Russell Westbrook, who just fractured true. his hand. Oh um, yeah, I forgot he did. Yeah, so he just had surgery. He'll be, he'll be back. But yeah, Clippers have James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi, who are all on the tail end of their prime mm-hmm. or not in their prime. So yeah. they have a lot of pressure. But uh, I don't think any more than the Celtics, kind of as Peter's clip on Instagram yeah. suggested. Um, yes, the Celtics have a young core, but they've had this young core, quote unquote, which they're not really that young anymore. <laughs> um, they have this young core for four or five years yeah. at this point, rotating in some new players. If they don't win this year with how weak the East has been, it's ridiculous. And how much they've been running. And we'll talk about the, them just annihilating the Warriors on national t- television. <laughs> the other day but they're kicking the crap out of teams right now and if they don't win it this year it's like 
you have to make a radical change because you're never going to win it at all. Yeah, because like, something isn't working. Yeah, and like I don't think I usually see it getting to the finals as the pinnacle. Like if you put yourself in that big game, then whatever. of course you want to win it. But yeah. I think there's also a, a testament to whatever happens and, and the finals happens. Mm-hmm. And so for the Celtics, I think they need to make the finals. There's they the, need to make the finals. With period. How, with how weak the East is, yeah, they, they have a straight shot for it. I don't yeah. know. This isn't fair, but if the Clippers or the Nuggets made the finals, I would say. They need to go win the whole thing um, with their aging superstars. The Nuggets have already won a championship. Mm-hmm. It's not enough just to get to the finals. Yeah. For, and especially because the West is so loaded. With the Celtics, it's like they don't, They just need to get to the finals. I don't think they actually need to win the championship to consider the season a victory. They just need to get into the finals again and get just back to where they, they were. Can, yeah. yeah. And prove that they can prove they can handle an Easter conference but that then, they've been running away from. On the other side of that coin, though, it's like it's maybe they don't need to win the finals, but if they don't make the finals, it's a much worse look as opposed to the other teams like, oh, well, they should win it all, but it's not as big of a deal if they don't. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What do you think, Raj? I mean, I think, yeah, the Celtics, with how weak the East is and how injured they are, if they don't make it to the finals with how well they've been performing in the regular season, they're going to be known as regular season merchants. Hmm, it's just that sounds gonna, familiar. Yeah, it's just going to be like this all the time. And I mean... It'll be interesting to see. Usually we see this every year. They go to the uh, finals. Steph happens. Andrew Wiggins happens. Oh, well. <laughs> you reload and come back next season. You get taken to seven by the um, Sixers who choked. Yeah. And then you go in and you're playing Jimmy Butler in the Heat, who for some reason is your biggest kryptonite yeah. every year. And then you lose to them. And it's just like, you're with how weak the East is and how strong the West is, you should be making the finals like consistently. Yeah. And at least if you're going to lose, be losing to teams that can like, compete with you not to seven seats yeah <laughs> yeah i mean like the only team i could see maybe is like if they lose to the bucks in seven in the eastern yeah, conference finals like, maybe fine. you say it is what it is yeah. like that's a damon Giannis team but yeah. there's no other team in the east who you can even say but whereas in the west i go okay the clippers nuggets timberwolves lakers i'll still put them in that class the thunder are really good um the phoenix suns obviously the kings have got there's so many good teams whereas mm-hmm. i feel like the celtics are a class above the east right yeah. now um, maybe only second, mm-hmm. maybe only team in their tier is, is the Bucks. So seven exactly. games ahead of the, what are they called? They're eight the games Bucks, against the Bucks right now. now. Yeah, eight games. Um, yeah, they, it's I was updated to that. Yeah, okay. so it's they're they're far and away. They've already clinched the playoffs. They could just yeah. lose, they could lose every game from here on out and still yeah, it win. doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, of course, a lot of teams have pressure on them this year yeah. to do to do good. Um, that's how it is every year. There's a lot of yeah, teams that need to go win, but I think at the end of the day, the Celtics have the most just because. Mm-hmm. At some point, they had to actually start proving they could win a championship. And for guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, this is like Jason Tatum wants to have an all-time type career, which mm-hmm. he can be on pace for. He needs to get a ring. He's yeah. got to win a ring. Yeah. And um, if it, it doesn't work this season, there's going to be talks about blowing it up. Yeah. There there will be. I think I think you could really see that, like a Jalen mm-hmm. Brown I mean, trade. There are talks about it last season, too, but then they paid that man an ungodly amount million. of money. Yeah, they, yeah. Reloaded, they, they reloaded last year, which yep. I think was a decent call. But if you bring you in Drew Holiday, yeah. Porzingis, and... Drew Holiday, Porzingis, Jalen Brown, big contract. Jason Tatum again a year more into his prime. Yep. Derek White's really good, and you're just mm-hmm. like, oh man, what else can we do to make this team better? Because the at that point, the problem will be that you didn't have Nikola Jokic or Giannis Antetokounmpo, yep. and you're not going to get them. Yeah. So that's what it becomes hard. That's why it's a star driven game. Like it if really you is, or yeah. when even when you can't have Jimmy Butler in the playoffs, like yeah, that's true. That type of guy. <laughs> that's and, true. Like, you need to have that player to carry you. I guess you just need Michael Jordan's son. Man, I guess. <laughs> Yes. So, all right. That was reacting to comments. Just one comment, but a really well coherent stand. Shockingly. Yeah. yeah. Don't get many of those, but yeah. it's our favorite segment of the week. Yes. Disgruntled moment of the week. Disgruntled meaning dissatisfied or angry. We discuss things in our lives, things in sports that make us or others disgruntled or angry. Raj, I'll start with you. What is your winner for disgruntled moment of the week? Myself, because of Pittsburgh driving. No one knows. <laughs> Please how to tell drive. me your car didn't. No, nothing okay. happened to okay. it. Just Thank no Christ. one knows how to drive in this city. I don't understand. There's a thing called Pittsburgh left. If you're going to do a Pittsburgh left, at least make sure a car isn't coming at you. So for those that don't know, Pittsburgh left is where you're both waiting across each other at a stoplight. And then instead of letting the other person go straight as you would normally, you just whip the left as fast as you can and cut the person off yep. pray to god <laughs> and just pray to god they don't hit you <laughs> number two when you're driving in a city turn signals are a valuable asset to you so you don't cause accidents behind you don't just whip from lane to lane to avoid getting caught in traffic 
especially I, when I'm gunning it 40 in the other lane. <laughs> I I feel this so much because I number I, I jaywalk like it's yeah, not, of course. Like, it's, so it's my fault. But when cars are like have the decision to take a like a right onto a main yeah. road, and I'm debating if I can jaywalk or not, I often yeah. won't because I'm like, oh, this car could go straight and then I'll die. Yeah. Um, and then they'll hit the right, and I'm like, put your blinker on. Yeah, put your blinker on. Like, like that's you, what I you need have to see. them for a reason. Like, nah, I, but then they turn the blinker on, hit you with a fake out, and just go straight. <laughs> yeah, it's really when they hit you with the blinker, like as they're making the turn, and you're like, that it's too late. Yeah, like yeah. you just don't don't it's put the blinker this. on. Don't even use it at that point. Yeah, like it, don't, don't pretend like you're using it. Mm-hmm. Or people will wait at a light, and they're like, no, the blink the blinker sound gets on my nerves too much, so they won't put the blinker blinker on and then once the light turns like green just hit they'll it. turn it on and, and i'm like go. like there's no point like just please use your turn signals when you're driving especially in a city if you're like on a like a like a bigger road that's like less crowded sure whatever that's a raj take please use please your turn, use sig- your turn yeah, at all please, times please use your turn <laughs> signals and follow all safety whether guidelines. you're in the middle of farmland kentucky or, or in new york city please use please your turn signals yes, use that's what i meant all turn signals and follow all safety laws. i i meant if it was a very empty road no one's near you it's no like, no no this no is the, this <laughs> is not... even if you're taking a right under your in your driveway let it be known that the uh the thoughts and opinions <laughs> of the members of the coconut curry podcast do not represent the company as a whole <laughs> And mainly it's this guy. <laughs> and mainly it's him. <laughs> I always use my turn signal, guys. It's okay. Mm-hmm. There we go. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought. Three, a white Dodge Challenger trying to race me today. In your Acura? Yeah. It was funny. I'm just like, I'm just cruising 40, going the speed limit, just on my way on um, on fifth, going towards the gym. And then I, I just hear, you know, an engine revving. And I'm just like, hmm, that's weird. I look to my right in my mirror. And there I see a Dodge, a white Dodge Challenger just gunning it for no reason. At 12 p.m., there was no need. There was, I don't know why. And then he pulls up right next to me, looks at me, and then just starts, you know, kind of matching my speed, starts revving his engine a little bit, and then guns it even more. And I'm like, oh, okay. What did was the, car, the, point did of the that? car pop at all? Any like popping? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And I'm I can't like, stand that. It's yeah. so, I think it's so obnoxious. Oh, there was God. no need to do all that. And like, what, you want to race me in my 2016 Acura RDX? <laughs> Be my guest. Yeah. I will not race you. Because <laughs> Big Dog over here can only race non-race cars because his car sucks ass. <laughs> I I think it's so funny when people want to race on the road or just like the popping of the engines. I just don't oh I don't get car culture at all and the need to care about like how your car sounds and looks and sounds like i don't get it's, it sounds well like sounds i get to an extent where it's like if it like the engine legitimately sounds good while driving it i understand and like or like the changing of the gears like the revving sure but like if you're just doing it to be obnoxious like it's so it's so annoying because we get all these like we get the bikers we get the, the yep. people uh with like their souped up cars whatever on forbes and on fifth and it's just obnoxious it's like dude no one cares i don't know if i shared this on the pod but i think i thought i was getting shot at one day because like, of the when i was walking yeah. to the d- dining hall because i thought someone like pulled an ar on me or something because yeah. i was like what is what the what's going on what's yeah. the popping so yeah like um, that that that's ridiculous especially in a city like dude you cannot be doing that no cannot be having that. and but. there's just like i don't know i maybe some people don't care but i just feel like there's a consideration factor of people are in their homes like trying to do work and yeah. and like obviously the city is loud in general and yeah. like honking you can't help that it's part of the but like yeah i feel like the popping of the car engines or whatever yeah. they're doing is yeah, the just not necessary that's why one one of these days i'm just i swear i'm just gonna put all of my money that i have into souping up a miata <laughs> just the dumbest car possible and give it like a punch buggy literally just give it like a, like a, <laughs> there's this one uh tiktok i said the raj the one time and it was this dude who is like uh it was, he like stitched a um he stitched like a car guy that was being really cringe and was like oh like i'll gap you and like i'll steal your girl whatever and this dude put i kid you not a boeing jet engine <laughs> into a car into just a sedan like like a like basically a honda civic that's electric like it was like what in the hell am i looking at like that dude has like thirty thousand horsepower in that thing <laughs> so unnecessary <laughs> so unnecessary it's gotta get so hot dude but oh, it would yeah. be so funny if you just out of nowhere just like just rip that thing on the highway It'd be so Everyone's funny look at you be like what like what it literally is a jet engine oh, taking off God. that's so funny and then fact number five you're still on this Jeez. i think i think you're on four four no four yeah four for four when you are street parking 
and you and you know that when you street park, there's certain zones you can't park in on the street because there's driveways or a fire hydrant or something. Be considerate to others who might want a spot and don't take up three possible spots mm. by taking up the most space True. possible there. It's annoying and I hate circling around having to try to find another spot because it's a further walk for me. <laughs> well, granted, you do just not walk anyway. Yeah, if there's one, th- there's a lot of things we can say about Raj <laughs> in the podcast, but one for certain is that that kid hates walking. This man hates walking. He won't walk anywhere. No, Mm-mm. too much, not. too much cardio. <laughs> walk to class on a nice day. Nope, no. nope. I'll drive. Let me drive with my air conditioning. <laughs> yep, I'll have the windows down at least. Uh, okay, big dog. Save for sure. Save gas. <laughs> Is there a five to the the rules or please no? Please no more. <laughs> five to the prick who parks in front of my driveway. Please park a little further back so that every time I make a turn, I don't have to think about hitting the fire hydrant every time or your car. <laughs> the address <laughs> is the please no. <laughs> We're not doing that again. The address is nine nine three zero. Like, it sounds like um uh, uh Skillman Ave. <laughs> Skillman Ave. <laughs> That's actually real. That's the the, the the street's real. I don't know about the number. It sounds like what is it? Is it three hundred Penn Avenue or something? Yeah, That's the White House. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like six hundred Grand Street, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. What's that? UPMC headquarters. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, you or me next. It doesn't matter. All right. I'll, I'll Do go you have with more, me. Raj? No, that's it. Okay. I, 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 I'm, 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 I that was the most you've talked in a while. <laughs> yeah, we a got lot. a yapper over here. <laughs> <laughs> my laptop died. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no more games. Disgruntled. No more balloons. Um, tower defense. What? So this, we're recording this on Tuesday. It's had two very nice weather days in Pittsburgh. I'm preemptively giving me a disgruntled moment of the week for how I am going to feel tomorrow when, when the weather's nice. crap. And yeah. part of it's like there's a seasonal depression. Like you don't I see mean, the yeah. sun. The weather's nice. There's also just something about seeing the campus be like alive and people out and about actually on the green. Yeah. yeah. Like I went out to get coffee with my, like my boss today and we were just walking down and seeing people out on the lawns and just like, I just feel like the student body, whether they're out on the lawn, just tanning or whether it's just walking around campus, like it's more alive. Like people mm-hmm. stay, people don't want to be outside. People are kind of just like staying in their room or going to class during the winter. Mm-hmm. And I enjoy seeing the campus like be bustling and people be around. And I know that it's going to rain tomorrow. And the weather's Don't not going to be good for the next couple days. And it's just going to go back to like... Well, that's why we're going to Nashville. It's really yeah, on Saturday. It's right? going to go back to depressing uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh. And then we'll yeah. be in Nashville. We'll be electric. Yeah. And we'll come yeah. back. And there's going to be bad days. Bad weather, yeah. And then it's going to be a dead campus again. So I, I really do appreciate when the campus is like... Yeah. Oh, it's like raining overnight. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know like how to describe it. There's just like an energy that comes on when there's it good really weather. Yeah. Everybody's outside. It's like, oh, you want to like... Throw football well, outside. You want to play ball. spike ball. You want to do, yeah. It's, and, it's just really, really nice. Yeah. It looks like a college. And it's very, like, yeah, it looks like a college. Like, I, I don't know if anyone's seen this show, Zoe 101, but it's like, a, it looks like that. The boarding school, like, yeah. And then they go to high school there, but because California, the weather's always nice in the show. Yeah. And then it's like, you think that's how college is going to be, mm-hmm. but you don't account for the fact that in most areas of the country, the weather is bad in the winter. <laughs> exactly. and you don't go outside. And so it's like Pittsburgh is gray, yeah. cloudy kind of depressing during mm-hmm. the winter everybody's inside it's yep. like oh you gotta slog through just walking to mm-hmm. class in the, in the snow and the cold and then you finally get some nice weather days and i'm like yes like yeah. finally um but yeah as my disgruntled moment of the week is that i'm gonna mm-hmm. be very angry and dissatisfied in tomorrow mm-hmm. when i'm of editing course. this podcast yeah. or it comes out also before i do mine i'm gonna try to flip the lights on so we actually have light okay so uh my disgruntled moment of the week uh the reason why i'm drinking is because of the new york giants i want you to know that um why why are you the way that you are <laughs> Why, why do we have two franchise players and we're letting them both walk? Like, I understand, okay, well, we have another, like, week to sign them, maybe. They're not signing yeah, with I was going to say, you're not, you're not... They're not signing with the Giants because Saquon Barkley is going to go to the Houston Texans. That's pretty obvious at this point. And the fact that we're letting Xavier McKinney walk, who's one of the better safeties in the NFL, not... I wouldn't say he's... he's I'd say he's probably, like, top 10, maybe. Yeah. Maybe top 15, something like that. Definitely on the upper echelon. Better than Reed Blankenship. Definitely better than Reed. But hey, don't talk about my white boy like that. <laughs> the fact that we can't get a deal done when we're we're paying Daniel Jones, we're paying That's Andrew Thomas. Godly amount of money. You cannot be talking with Jalen Hurts. Um Hurts is good. Anyway. <laughs> um we're paying three players. Not even we're not even paying them yet. There's Daniel Jones is getting paid. Andrew Thomas and Dexter Lawrence were both on their fifth year option this past year. And then they're getting paid this upcoming year. 
who else are we paying? There's nobody else on the team that's paying. Like, no, we're not paying a receiver. No, we're not paying offensive lineman. Darren Waller, uh, fine. Yeah, I think it was like twelve million though. It wasn't anything crazy. It was. Yeah, it's not like it's not like it's not. Up. It's not insane. And then we can cut him after this next year. Yeah. Yep. And then for anybody on defense, it's like yeah, we're paying Dexter Lawrence. We're paying Bobby O'Karaki, a uh, pretty decent payday, like nothing insane. And then we have like rookies everywhere else. Just wait till Evan Neal ask for a contract. That man's can't even get a contract at McDonald's at this point, okay? <laughs> that man is a domestic terrorist in the city of New York. Um, so Giants, can you please figure it out? I'm so, like I I'm always gonna be a Giants fan, but goddamn do you make it really, really difficult to be a Giants fan. And it it hurts a lot. So it looks like just looking at some base salaries, it's Daniel Jones thirty five, Andrew Thomas fourteen, Dexter Lawrence sixteen, Waller ten, Okereke seven. And then you just got a bunch of guys making like low millions here. Of course, you got like Hyatt's your best receiver. He's got one million flat. That's a rookie. Like, no, yeah. like who is getting paid? Where? I mean, why yeah, don't we I have mean, any Tom, money? Tommy DeVito just eating up a lot at $950,000. Like, <laughs> Literally less than a mil. Yeah. Like, wh- like, and they just added to the salary cap. And they have no, I'm looking at dead cap. They don't really have much dead cap. No, and they're they're thirty million dollars positive this year. Yeah, I was just looking at that. You <laughs> what? what? Uh, no, it's up to forty one million now. Who are we paying? Like, give them a contract for the love of God! I can't wait for the mid off between the Giants and Commanders every season for the next five years. Well, the Giants own the Commanders, and that's the only team that they're going to be play good against forever. That's true. Like every year, that's actually like- crazy that they didn't do. Now that you have forty one million dollars in cap, like you're not going to sign anyone because a lot of the guys who were potential people you could yeah. sign got franchise tagged and we'll talk about that later yeah. in the episode but like what are we doing who are you paying and you're not it's not like you're saving up your cap space to sign a quarterback because you just gave your daniel quarterback jones, a yeah. ton of money like I, <laughs> daniel jones fooled you all with that one season again you cannot be talking with jaylen hurts <laughs> and, hey that's not his fault it's brian johnson's fault yeah okay. i will keep saying that until Whatever. next season when you all right. This is more. <laughs> All righty. Now Just it's time. On. We had a guest on last uh, we week. We got another guest. Um, yeah. We had Peter's girlfriend, Jamie, on last week. And now we have Kenzie. And our friend Kenzie <laughs> is making her long-awaited debut on the podcast. Yeah. She's been asking since I think we've started this podcast, yeah, she's essentially, been beefing with to, us join. to join. So Kenzie, coming in the frame here, you can take <sighs> Peter's mic. Welcome to the podcast. We are very excited to hear what your disgruntled moment of the week is. So originally, I didn't really have anything to be disgruntled about this week because it's been so nice outside, and that just makes me such a happier person and a better person to be around, if I'm being quite frank. (laughs) But after listening to all of their disgruntled moments, I have to agree with a lot of them. First of all, the parking in Oakland literally drives me insane. There's never parking. Just send this to the mayor. (laughs) No, literally. Yeah. Gainey gonna look at this and yeah, laugh Mayor about it <laughs> Like, there's no parking in front of my apartment, like, ever. And when there is parking, people park like idiots. Like, there is so much space. Like, if you just move your car up literally a foot, like, a whole nother car. And it sounds crazy, but swear to God, a whole nother car could fit behind them. So that's number one. I now I can't even remember because I'm just thinking about parking. <laughs> it's got you all riled up over here oh, with the yeah. parking. Oh no, my other thing is, yeah, they're right. I've literally been asking to be on this podcast for over a year. And they like they were like, Oh, like you have to fill out a form, like you have to <laughs> sign up. And you know you what? Did. You did. Yeah. You know what? No. Remember all their like tier you, lists? You never choosing? emailed. You never emailed. Yeah, you but never because did. it was stupid. <laughs> And There's a process to this. We have a lot of requests. Oh, okay. <laughs> have you seen our last episode? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and also, all their tier list Tuesday stuff, I would do it every week with them. They started posting me eventually. Appreciate it. But still, it's one of those things that just disgruntles me. And I don't think we've ever used disgruntled as a verb this time. Well, the actual, yeah. yeah. First time on the pod, first time using that phrase, so... Honestly, Drop a like for that. I know this is like the worst week to ask me to share my disgruntled moments because the su- the, the what sunshine. What was your disgruntled moment last week? Oh, I was at work and this lady don't tried- talk to your workplace because I did. I had to do so yeah. many blanks yeah. last <laughs> last episode. No, I'm not. No, okay, I said good. the place no, where I work. The place we got where a little I work. off the rails last week. I had a customer. Uh, with. No. <laughs> I had a customer get mad at me. 
because I started talking to her the same way that she was talking to me, and she got a little disgruntled. <laughs> and then she was going on and on about how she got a gold medal in the Olympics for gymnastics wow. and for wrestling. And I'm just, I'm and just sitting and there wrestling. and wrestling. Wow, yes. dual sport athlete. I know. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, wow, that's really great. Congratulations. So proud of you. Like, oh my gosh, that's so great. And then she's like, well, so catch me outside. How about that? Like unironically, like she literally said that unironically. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, actually you can leave now. Like, bye. I won't be catching you outside. (laughs) No, I was like, please leave me alone. And the rest of my customers that are sitting at the bar are like, what just happened? Like, what is wrong with that lady? I was like, I honestly don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I just work here, honestly. And then that night I ended up having to stay until 2.30 in the morning and I had to get up at 7 a.m. the next day for work. Wow, rally. It was terrible. I ended up leaving work early and I slept for five hours. So it it ended up okay. You're preparing for Nashville. (laughs) Yeah. That's... I'm more inclined to rally for Nashville than I am from work. Mm-hmm. So I just want to get you on the record. A great disgruntled mo- moment of the week. Um, Thank you. Long, long awaited and well worth I it. I agree. Thank um, you. Have you gone to I do have to ask though on a little bit. I do have to ask on the podcast because we talked to Jamie last week about it. Thoughts on the cutoff flannels that we will yeah. be wearing in Nashville. Oh my God. I've honestly been against this from the very beginning. Oh, but is there a button there? But it's but. very funny. It's very funny. And I just draw the line. Like, they can dress up in it and they can take a picture in it. But they are not going out like that. And if they do, <laughs> I am not associated with anybody wearing like a cutoff flannel. The, the casino and the cutoff, cutoff flannels. Wow. I'm like, I'm scared that the cutoff wow, wow, wow. flannels are going to give them this, like, weird sort of confidence and then try to, like, fight people in Nashville because. No, no, because no. that is a real thing I, that might happen. I think there's four of us on the trip who could use a little bit of confidence. <laughs> oh no! Like I'm just no, I'm not saying it's just like a bad kind of confidence, like a bad kind of a, confidence. like oh. like you think that you can fight people and the people in Nashville. Like if you meet the locals in Nashville, like I feel like they're gonna kick your butt. Like, but you know what? Like I'll videotape it and I'll I'll laugh at it. So I guess like whatever works. Think, but like I'm just not associated. I think if there was cowboy boots, cut off flannels jean shorts and a cowboy hat that might be a little too much see i'm not much better though because i literally have that whole outfit besides the cut off flannel so so when we it's do tourist it it's a behavior problem, yeah. when you do it it's not oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me wear cut off flannels but it'll be a great picture yeah um, great picture opportunity great time to wear it in the casino <laughs> when we're out like oh prescott. that in the casino i should get the dak prescott haircut Please no <laughs> Maybe we should wear them on the pod for our Nashville recap. Cool. We could. That would actually be, yeah, you should do that. But yeah, the, the Temu order just came in with them all, <laughs> which is really funny. I'm like a little bit scared. I'm going to open them. They're just going to be like baby size. Yeah, because that'd I feel be like, really funny. It's just going to be like anthrax. <laughs> yeah, I haven't opened them yet, but I'm going to have to like fold them up and put them in the suitcase to come down to Nashville. Just Take- starts a new pandemic because he opens a box and some disease comes <laughs> out of it. All for the, it would be worth it though. It would be, be worth, worth it. Yeah, you can name it Curtis Twenty Four. Yeah, yeah, oh. I could. That'd be tough. That'd be tough. Kenzie, great, great opportunity to have Thank you on the you podcast. For having me, we hope to finally. have you back. Yeah, I'll probably yeah, be here. Round of applause. I feel like if I had my yeah. pad right here, I'd do oh, the yeah, little applause. Oh yeah. Bad, <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. And that, everyone, is disgruntled moment of the week. Yeah. Our favorite segment, as always, Ugh. where we get a little bit of a insight to our personal life. <laughs> Love doing it. But let's move on to sports and talk about the NBA. There's been a lot of crazy storylines recently. A lot of weird games, of course. It's a little different than football. It's like a whole week between the recordings. But we're going to go over some big big games and what this kind of means for the standings. Starting with, shockingly, the San Antonio Spurs beating the Oklahoma City Thunder. That was nuts. And I put this on the list because this was the opportunity to see Victor Wembenyama and Chet Chet Holmgren on TV. And Victor was doing some nasty things yes. in the court. Dogging him. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely dogging him. There's this play where he hits a step back three point shot and then comes down and just whacks the ball oh right back to face. Oh my god. That that block in the open court was so unbelievably disrespectful. Like I can't even it was like th- 
looking at Victor Webinyaba, he literally looks like in 2K when you just max out all of the sliders and they just don't even look like real people anymore. But he's a real human being and it's hard to wrap my head around. He's him. not fair. Like it's it's so unfair. He saw the it, check comparisons and said, I took that personally. I'm gonna show you why he's nowhere close to me. Yeah. I think ridiculous. I think it's funny because people have given him all the flowers yeah. since he's been a prospect mm-hmm. like two years ago. And it almost feels like it's dramatic and overkill to praise what he is and what he is in this league, but he has just been fantastic and more so than just being a good basketball player. He's been so fun to watch mm-hmm. and has really provided like a lot of life to the league that I not that, that was needed, but that's really much appreciated, yeah. especially with the rookie class. You feel like every year the draft ca- class kind of gets weaker. Like I feel like people yeah. do less scouting. The international players are more wild cards. People don't go to college as much. Um, so you never really know like the Thompson brothers, people weren't really like didn't know them that well coming mm-hmm. into the draft. Um, even this year, like you don't really hear much other guys from the draft class. Like Brandon Miller's been super quiet. Um Scoot Henderson has been super quiet. Um, but at the top of it, you get Victor, yeah. who's just been super fun. In his last 10 games, Victor is averaging 23 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, five blocks, two steals on 50, 50 percent uh from the field, 43 percent from three, and 80 five percent from the free throw line oh my it is god he's been very good does he's, he have the f- uh, fives across the board stat average yet uh he doesn't have the box yet yeah, okay. but he, the box he, yet. if if there was going to be a player that could do it it would be him yeah and for those that don't know it's like scoring or having five in each of the like statistical categories mm-hmm. in basketball like points rebounds assists block steals yeah it's it's ridiculous. He's totally live for defensive player of the year. I don't think he gets it just because his team is so bad. It's yeah. hard, to, hard to win awards. This is the problem he's going to come with rookie yeah. of the year where it's, he's been better than Holmgren, but like you need to like Holmgren's could have the one seed in the mm-hmm. West and, and Victor's team is down at the, the thing the is bottom seed for, um, for that though, is like, even as like San Antonio knowing it's like, okay, look, we're not good. It's, it's fine. But seeing how bright of a star he is and like knowing like, okay, well, we have a good draft pick this upcoming year, and then so they can at least build depth on their team, and also not to mention for any other like pretty decent players that are on kind of middling teams that like aren't really going to go anywhere. If you're going to push for a trade, don't you want to play with that guy? Yeah. yeah no. Like, are you kidding me? Is that I think like when you think of like actually this would be a good example. If the Celtics really feel like they need to mix something up. And you kind of think of a trade where the like, Spurs got cap space. Maybe there's a third team involved. You send some picks over, like a high pick mm-hmm. in this draft. You do some player navigating. And you get Jalen Brown's big old contract with Victor. And you start to go, okay, that's like a guard uh, like, center p- comparison. Yeah. Or just anybody who's interested in Trae signing a big contract. Young. Yeah, Trey Young's a great example. Yeah. Like he, That like, would be the craziest difference between height oh, yeah. and between your two-star players. Oh, yeah. But I mean, he'll throw assists to him. Yeah. He won't be like, what's the, what's the dude with the bleached hair? on the spurs that literally oh, refuses. uh shows in yes Shoan, yeah. that dude literally has it out for victor he doesn't want him to win rookie of the year i don't know what his deal is he refuses to throw the ball it's him. really funny too because he played on a virginia basketball team in college that was just very like fundamental and, and he like just, all like, won't, assist heavy yeah <laughs> he just, won't, he just do it. won't mass it <laughs> yeah. um and, uh, for the san antonio spurs but yeah it's absolutely a great point like guys want to go play there yeah um Obviously, now the interesting thing is since we last talked, the Spurs have won two games Whoa. in the last week, Whoa. and they're Whoa. I know, and that's that's crazy. And they're three and seven in the last ten. They're on a two game winning streak. <laughs> and the only reason I mention that is because they could actually cost themselves some draft stock here. Oh, uh, <laughs> obviously we expect Paul the, Victor. <laughs> obviously we expect the Wizards to be the worst team in the league. Um, again, f the Wizards. Check out our episode hey, from two we'll weeks ago. We'll drop thirty the other day. Did cool. They yeah, yeah, they lost. <laughs> um, and so now they're only four games back of Portland. And if they kind of get pick up some momentum at the end of the year, which I expect they will, they're going to their yeah. young team. They'll probably get better throughout the year. They pick off some teams, maybe resting guys as they head into the playoffs. I'm like, if you end up falling into like the fourth, fifth lottery odds, yeah. you could actually hurt yourself a little bit here. And I don't know much about the draft class. We'll do a little bit more investigation there. Once but that comes closer. Yeah. yeah, but there is a point where Victor next year should be able to, should be like able to be a playoff type of basketball player. So almost it's like, do you trade that pick and try to like do something where you get a bat a player? Like it's going to sound dumb, but like the, if the Pelicans don't have a good year, it's like, Oh, they would, they appreciate a new draft pick. Just swap out Ingram or Zion for a high pick. And- <laughs> Send Zion. There. <laughs> oh my God. 
dude, that front court would be ridiculous. ridiculous. That's the opposite end of another spectrum at yeah, that point. Yeah, you'd have the thickest man and the skinniest man oh my God. on either side. Yeah. You just have a power forward and a center. Are you kidding me? Hey, I'd watch. That would be yeah. that would them together. Like, who would guard them? Like, how? It's in matchup night. LeBron. Because they just like throw the ball up top yeah. to each other. Yep. And then, like, Zion just jumps straight up. Zion just, just jumps straight lobs. up and then just like throws elbows and breaks people's ribs. Yeah. Well, that's if Zion's healthy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But Vic, uh, Wemby's been super fun. Yeah. Um, it's been great. And just watching that Thunder game, which is a pure example of just the crazy stuff he can do. Yeah. Because even though they're the one seed, like you never know it, what yeah, can happen. You never know what can happen. And just to see a seven foot five, seven foot six guy, whatever he is, just doing step back threes. Step back threes, handles, like. Yep. Assists. He's, he's kind of like Carl Anthony Towns, but like with taller and better. exponentially more <laughs> yeah. potential. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so if you take Carl Anthony Towns, he's that's the baseline for a center who can really stretch the floor. And it's like Victor is better at everything. Yeah. At a younger age. Yeah. And it's like if you literally took Carl Anthony Towns and like in the like Photoshop tool instead of like expanding him with like the uh, the diagonal that like yeah. proportionally stretches him, they just stretch him vertically. Yeah, vertically <laughs> so yeah. it just it just gets skinnier as he goes up. That's so funny. <laughs> um, if you are watching on video, we we do apologize. It gets getting a little bit more dark out here, yeah. but uh, you can just like good audio or, or just imagine what we look like. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you'll still like. be able to see us for a little bit. But yeah. did want to point that out. It, it's yes. kind of cool though. A little transition from. Yeah. Light to dark, I am missing okay. the sun, though. Okay, Raj, this is some campfire. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're about to tell a ghost story. For folks on audio, Raj, just put a Ooh, phone flashlight. You want to hear something Here's spooky? A spooky I'll story. Tell, I'll tell, Red Farms tax returns. <laughs> I'll tell you something the, spooky. The, the, the Los Angeles it? Lakers beating the Oklahoma City Thunder oh, last yeah. night. Oh, yeah. 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 And the reason this is super spooky um, is the Thunder are 2-5 and five in their last seven games versus the oh, Lakers. sliding. No. And there's a very real world in which... There's a very real world in which the Lakers yes, could end as the eighth seed. The Thunder could end as a first seed. And they're Owen they're Owen three against the Lakers this season. If the if the if the dude okay, wait, hang on a sec. Playoff LeBron. If if, if the Thunder go through <laughs> another like another whole round of having an incredible young core and watching them all leave because they get blown <laughs> up in the playoffs. I will cry of laughter. This Thunder's gym is going to be two young core teams like this. <laughs> Literally, some of the, like, because what they had, Harden, Durant, and Westbrook. Westbrook. Yep. Probably one of the best young cores. And there's ever. guys, Serge Ibaka was on that team, Serge Kendrick Ibaka. Perkins. God. Yeah. So then you add, then you have, then you have SGA, Chet. Um, Josh Giddy. Unfortunately, Josh Giddy. <laughs> um, Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams. Like, uh, Lou Dort. Like, if they go through this again, where they have all these young stars and they just keep choking in the playoffs, good lord, that I feel yeah. so bad for and that they, city. And they've got such a great future. And I don't want to take anything away from them. It's very impressive yes, where they're at yeah, right let now. Let me be very clear. I think it'll be really funny. I hope that doesn't happen because I like... I don't like all of the players on that team. There's one specifically I don't like very much. <laughs> he beat the allegations. But whatever. But um, a lot of those guys on the team are very likable young guys. So like, it's it's hard not to root for them. Yeah. Um, but I just I just see like after these last couple games of the Lakers, I just see the possibility where if the Lakers get potential. the Lakers get the seven seed, they get the two seed, or they get the one seed. Lakers get the eight seed, and right. they are in the first round. And everybody is going to pick the Lakers over the Thunder, and you're going to. No, I think I I think, no. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't think... be fooled. It, this is regular season D'Angelo Russell. Just wait for playoff D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, but Russell. this is regular season LeBron at age 30, uh, 39. Yeah. Like, that is true. Look, Uh-oh. I think I still think the money would be on OKC, but I think the second that the Lakers go up, if they go up one nothing, immediately the script flips. Uh-huh. Immediately. Yeah, and Oklahoma would be like... They would have to sweep them. Yeah, and that would be a... A crowd that I think mm-hmm. they, Oklahoma City has a passionate fan base, but Absolutely. it's not like Boston. Like I think there will be a lot of Lakers fans in that crowd. Oh yeah, um, they, Lakers fans travel. Yeah. They might be front runners and bandwagoners, but they travel. A oh, really wow. random stat in that game: Spencer Dinwiddie plus thirty one oh, while he was on the court coming court? off the bench. The and Spencer <laughs> Dinwiddie's been a great addition to the Lakers <laughs> since he's been there. But I looked the, at I was watching the game and looked at box score. I was like thir- plus thirty one. Who did the Nets get for him? Or, um, who the, they like, released him. They, they just, oh, they just yeah. released him? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's our dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, they just released players. So um, that was an interesting game. Thunder um, have lost three straight lost three straight games versus the Lakers. Big deal. But I did want to talk a little bit about 
the Lakers' upcoming schedule because they have a really big test here. They just okay. played they just played uh, the Clippers. They came back from behind. They lost the game in the middle, and then they beat the Thunder. Their next games are Kings, Bucks, Timberwolves, Kings, Warriors, Atlanta Hawks, 76ers, Pacers, Bucks. Oh, so they got a gauntlet coming up. They have a gauntlet coming up. A lot of them, Sixers. A lot of them will be in <laughs> the Hawks. The next couple games will be in California at home, and it's okay. a good stretch there, but. This is going to be a test for the Lakers that mm -hmm. I think is going to kind of define how they can do in the postseason here. They currently sit as a ninth seed. They are currently a half a game up on the Lakers, a game back from the Mavericks, a game and a half back from the Kings, two games back from the Suns. There is a realistic world in which they could get to that sixth seed, mm -hmm. but it's more likely than not to be in the play-in game. Mm -hmm. The question is, are they a seven seed playing the eight seed, or are they going to be nine, yeah. ten, having to go through that gauntlet? Because remember, nine and ten are going to play each other mm -hmm. for an opportunity to be in that seven eight that, that range to get the eighth seed so it is very interesting to see that so if people don't know how playing works seven eight play each other winner gets the seven seed yep. then nine ten play each other winner plays the loser of seven eight yep. and then they get the eight seed so the lakers would have to win two consecutive games to get into the eight seed which they would have to play the one seed and go on the road um whereas if they can get into that seven they have two opportunities to to win and if they get to the sixth seed they can just go ahead and play but what's also interesting is the top of the west is very stacked but Imagine you were Lakers, you get all this work to get to the sixth seed, and you're running into the three seeded Denver Nuggets in the first round. Ooh. Yeah. That ain't good. So, a lot of interesting uh, angles to go from there. But for the Lakers, a big stretch coming up here where they can get a lot of wins, I think, increase their confidence going into the playoffs a lot. But also, what if they just start losing a bunch of games? Yeah. That would be oh, so brutal. And brutal. it's like, ooh, and now you're going to have a 10 seed with like clearly can't beat the best teams in the league. But um, they've been playing a lot better as of late. But so has those bottom tier teams. Uh, the Warriors. Oh Jesus! Oh, <laughs> the motion yeah, activated the motion light turned on. Like, <laughs> just, oh, it's the eye of Sauron. <laughs> there we go. Um, but yeah, Warriors have been playing great. Uh, Mavericks not so great, and the Kings have been okay. So we'll see where that goes there. But I did want to talk about Sunday, March third basketball because okay. the NBA was low key cracked on this day. So I'm just going to go through some results. First off, we started with the 76ers beating the Mavericks without Joel Embiid, mm -hmm. and there was a big comeback. Uh, Tyrese Maxey was out for part of the game. Injured Tobias Harris carries the team. Um, that's on to me, victory. Tobias. That's on me, big dog. You're worth five crumble cookies. That's on me. <laughs> and the reason I wanted to mention it was just because, first of all, they were up big, and they almost choked in the fourth quarter. Oh, but the, the Mavericks are fighting for almost every game at this point to just not be in the play-in game. And the 76ers are just fighting to stay out of the play-in without Joel Embiid. And for them to pick up a huge win on the road like that yeah, is huge. absolutely massive and something that mm -hmm. we've talked about it before that one these one games are going to matter a lot when we think about playoff seeding. And this is a game where like I feel like the Mavericks could be in the play like in the play in game yep. and the Sixers could avoid the play in game. We're going to be, hey, this game right here changed that a lot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, second game, the Celtics went on national TV <laughs> on Sunday Pantsed. and pantsed. The Golden State Jaylen Warriors. Jalen Brown went off. Yeah, he had a left hand, unfortunately. Yep. I know, that was bad. The Celtics were up 22 points after the first quarter, 44 points at halftime, and then continued to build that lead to 55 at the end of the third quarter. And then they still only lost the fourth quarter by one point. Jeez. I mean, that was an absolute destruction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really was. And that was just a... an interesting thing to put more pressure on the Celtics because it was an ABC game, I believe, on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Everybody just watched the Celtics destroy yeah. the Warriors. And I, all I can think is the pressure is mounting for the Celtics where it's everyone like, sorry, car drove. Oh, <laughs> everyone is mounting this pressure on the Celtics. And I'm like, oh, now are we going to see an opportunity yep. where people fade off? But Raj, I love the dedication with the holding yeah, your hand. My hand's going to get tired. I need yeah, this light to turn off soon. Get numb. Um, ah. Clippers and T-Wolves played. as a big game for seeding out west. Of course, Timberwolves trying to hold on to the one seed. Clippers still in that range for four, five, six. And uh, the Clippers came out by a one-point win. I don't have a lot to say about the game, but it just uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a good game. I, a playoff matchup, that would be really fun. Yeah. A low-scoring defensive affair there, but something where, again, just the one game has matter a lot. Um, Pistons and Magic played each other. Oh, Anyways, no, that's magic. cool. I will say the Orlando Magic have been winning a little bit more. They're now out of the play-in game situation. Oh, um, cool. Could be an interesting team where if you see the Knicks kind of fall off a little bit and the Sixers fall off because of their injuries, then suddenly they kind of come in and get the five seed and replace that. Yes. So, um, <laughs> Hornets and Raptors. We don't need to talk Anyways. about that. No. We don't need to talk about that. Um, Knicks and Cavs. And the reason I'm, 
This is as big as Jalen Brunson for a minute. It looked like it was all over. Oh yeah, yeah, that was bad. I was re- I was ready to put my fist <laughs> through a wall because that would be the most New York sports moment. <laughs> the ever. dream was over before it even started. Yeah, and I yeah. literally think it's about to rain right now. Yeah. But <laughs> the sports gods are hearing me talk about Jalen Brunson, <laughs> and they got mad. But um, yeah, Uh-oh. it was almost really bad there. But I guess it was just a. Uh, just a bruise there on his knee. Yeah. So nothing too bad. Just a contusion. He'll probably yeah. be back soon. But mm-hmm. I was just, when I heard that happen, I was like, that's the last thing. I hate the Knicks, but that was just like the last thing that they could have like, used because OJ, yeah. OG, there OG. You go, buddy. and um, Julius Randle are both injured right now. Yeah. And to think that you'd lose Jalen Brunson, who's kind of become Mr. New York at this point. He really um, has. He's, he's really embraced the city. Everyone loves him. Oh, yeah. And for him to go down, I would have just been like, that is the worst thing that could have happened Mm -hmm. like you need him just to keep your team alive oh yeah but even without brunson they get the win against the Cavs, which yeah is again another indictment on the Cavs, just because they can't beat teams over 500 Mm -hmm. and (laughs) for the knicks that's a huge game to keep them in the standings right there i mean they're like when we talk about the east because of the injuries that have gone on um the knicks currently lead the sixers by a half of a game the sixers lead the magic by half a game like they're it's close yeah, these teams are really fighting to stay out of the 7, 8, 9, 10 range. Or really 7 and 8 range. And every game is going to matter. And for the Knicks, you're trying to... like. There's more hope about your players mm-hmm. coming back soon. Um, OG started to ramp up on-court activities and stuff like yep. that. So, really big win for them to hold into that standings. And now they're, they're still only three and a half games out of the Cavs, where if you start slipping more, you could get in that spot. It's a huge game just to gain ground in the Cavs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, Cavs slowly falling out of that spot where they might find themselves fighting for 4-5 six sooner yep. rather than later and then pacer spurs played each other and this was the game they won two in a row for the for the spurs and just another like Solid bad win. loss by yeah. the pacers yeah and for the spurs it's like you're losing draft position but um it's Vic- good for the culture yeah and victor's 30 31 12 and 6 Jesus in that Christ. game oh my God. Uh, tj mcconnell led all scorers 26 points for the pacers mm, which wow. shout out tj mcconnell is How was Howie injured or something? I uh, don't know, honestly. <laughs> don't know, don't really care. Um, and that last game that Sunday was the Thunder and uh, Suns playing each other. Thunder get the win. Um, Devin Booker doesn't play, but just again, another sort of game where this is a potential playoff matchup here, yep. like mm-hmm. six three seeds. Um, as well as just like a very fun series, Kevin Durant, um, yeah. there, and you kind of see what it looks like there. The Thunder had this, they're so young. Um, they also like young people, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but Whoa. I'll be shocked if that one stays in. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will forget about it. Um, but <laughs> um, but they they're a young team. They have a lot of energy to them, and they just came out and they were full court pressing. Yeah, the entire game against Kevin Durant and and Bradley Book, uh, Bradley Beal. Booker, Whoa. Bradley Beal. There you um, go. And just a, a matchup that I think could be really fun. You kind of see the Thunder like just their youthful energy being able to play every play really hard and you kind of see Kevin Durant like man I don't want to be full court like, pressed right now I'm old stop yeah. doing this it's like when people run into the Lakers and LeBron's feeling tired like, <laughs> you're really doubling like, oh, you're chipping me today like uh. and then he does the little step back three mm-hmm. and the last update I wanted to give in terms of the game last night on Monday was the Clippers lost to the Bucks last <laughs> night who did not that. have Giannis oh my god and classic Clippers <laughs> this was a classic game for me where I said I hate both teams. I've been very, and it's really just because of my takes. I've been very. <laughs> it's just because of my takes. Like I really, I gave you have to stand by them. Yeah, I, I gave a very vehement uh, disapproval of the James Harden to the Clippers. I thought I still think it's a bad choice for them, mm-hmm. but they've been playing really good, and I've kind of stayed silent about it. Um, but they've been playing very well, and then the Bucks. Obviously, we've given countless rants about oh, Doc yeah. Rivers and why he wasn't the right coach, and both teams have been playing well. So I was like, man, this is really bad. But then during this game, it was like, well, the Clippers lost, which is good for my anti-James Harden take. <laughs> Horrible for my anti Doc Rivers <laughs> take. Um, but uh, they were, granted, granted, the Clippers were off a of back-to-back against a very talented uh, Timberwolves team yeah. on the road. But to lose without Giannis is a brutal mm-hmm. loss for them, just standing-wise, but also can you beat the good teams? Like They lost to the Lakers. They let them come all the way back that one night not long ago with LeBron at 19-point fourth quarter. And now you lose to the Bucks without Giannis and for the Bucks you're getting a little bit momentum here mm-hmm. feeling good about yourself um but, but it does give me some concern about like <sighs> if they can God. play <laughs> the eye of Sauron has left <laughs> does give me some concern about whether they can do it in the playoffs against these really good teams consistently um also Russell Westbrook just the the hand injury is brutal hand, for yeah. them 
Um, but otherwise, Clippers have been playing really good. Yeah. Similar to the Lakers, the Bucks have a brutal oh, schedule. No. Tyrese Max had just got announced that the NBA's concussion protocol. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> we're cursed. It's going to be a rough game tonight. Please, Tobias, please. 10 double cookies, <laughs> please. Yeah. Um, the Bucks are very similar to the Lakers, where there's been some question marks. I know they've been playing well. They've won six in a row, but they've beaten the Hornets twice and the Bulls yeah. in that stretch. Like, not really like world beater and the Sixers who don't have their players. Oh, yeah. Um, but this next schedule, this is even worse than the Lakers. Mm -hmm. They have. The Golden State Warriors, which they've become a good team. Mm -hmm. Lakers, Clippers, Kings, Sixers, Suns, Celtics, Nets, Thunder, Lakers, Pelicans. Is this the Clippers schedule? No, this is the Bucks schedule Bucks. upcoming. Ooh. It's a brutal schedule. And I think this is where we're going to figure oh, out. Yes, sir. Doc Rivers returned to Philly. Yep, this is it is... in Philly? No, it was at home. <gasps> ah! um, this is, I think, where we're going to figure out if the Bucks are legit after or not. the all-star yeah. break mm -hmm. and with Doc Rivers as a coach are legit or not. Can they string? Can they keep this two seed? And stay stronger in this break, or are they going to turn into pumpkins against some of the better teams in the league? Right, like when you have the Warriors, which you know are a professional team. Andrew Wiggins back in the facility. I don't know if it'll be good for that game tomorrow on Wednesday. But then you got Lakers and Clippers back to back. I know you just beat the Clippers, but um, got them. And then you got teams like the Suns, Celtics back to back, Thunder, Lakers again. Like these are good teams, and it's like, can you beat these teams mm -hmm. night in and night out? Can you? Because if you can do that, I think you can become the second favorite team in the yeah, East. Oh, yeah. We shall but see. if you start falling off again, the narrative of, yeah. well, maybe the Joel Embiid Sixers can kind can, of like, challenge you. Back I can't yeah. wait for that playoff game. Doc Rivers returning to Philly. Joel Embiid, I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, I mean, it could be the Sixers be. easily. It, could, it, it wouldn't happen seed. like first round, yeah, but it could happen. Like, yeah, for sure. It could easily happen. Oh, I just want to see that narrative. Mm-hmm. Please, um, NBA script, please start cooking. Transitioning off of basketball, going over to football. Unfortunately, Faraj and I, and I feel like for the, the league as a whole. Yeah. For the league as a whole. Jason I'm Kelsey so announced yeah. his retirement yesterday, Monday, March mm. 4th, um, in a very, um, very non-shockingly emotional press yes. conference. Good Lord. I know Peter texted our group I, chat. Yeah, because I, I saw, uh, I follow a couple of uh, different accounts that usually can get like the tweets out faster mm -hmm. than, than, than normal accounts. And I saw like, oh, Jason Kelsey retires. And then it said like via announcement video. And I'm like, oh, so then like I do Jason Kelsey retirement video on YouTube. I'm like, oh, like nothing's like happened yet. And then I see Jason Kelsey like walking out. I'm like, oh, this is alive. Like he's like about to start. And he walks up and he just goes, I don't know how long this is going to be and starts bawling. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is going to be rough. <laughs> this is going to be a rough one. Yeah, that it really pulled at the heartstrings. And I'm not even, again, I'm not even an Eagles fan. Nowhere close. Bitter rivals with them. But I have the utmost respect for Jason Kelsey, both as a player and as a person. And I think that not only was his career amazing, I think his career going forward, whatever that might be, is going to be incredible. And he's like just such a great role model for like both young men and even young women that are watching just like to how to be... because. He himself understands he's not a perfect human being, but that's what makes him him. Yeah. yeah. I so, think yeah. a lot of players wear their heart on the sleeves by being aggressive. Yeah. And it's like, oh, he's just, he's got like kind of, Travis, Travis, actually. Like, Travis is a lot. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's very fiery. Jason Kelsey wears his emotion on his sleeve by like caring so much mm, about just so much. And this isn't saying Travis doesn't care. And this isn't saying that Jason definitely hasn't uh, gotten a little bit fiery at times, but they do wear their hearts and their sleeves differently. Do we want to move inside? I don't know. We can ride <laughs> that a little bit. All right, we'll let's wrap it. For rain. anybody that doesn't know, it's about to start raining yeah. where we are <laughs> because this is Pittsburgh. And the second we start talking about having nice weather, yep. it immediately changes. As long as the wind doesn't start... blow the rain at us. All right. We'll be yeah. fine. We're going we're gonna to try. All right. You got a really hard cut at any point. <laughs> Yeah, you get You'll a know real what drastic happened. cook and cut, and then us soaked. You yeah. know why? If you hear a loud lightning strike, you know what happened. <laughs> uh, we right, made anyway. it, we made it like fifty six minutes recording before yeah. we outside before we got derailed. Yeah. Um. But anyway, he yeah he made wearing his heart on his sleeve in an emotional yeah. way cool, and I I will really appreciate it from that. And um, also just bringing attention to like offensive yeah. linemen in general, yeah. which are just the most unsung heroes, but mm -hmm. the truly like the lifeblood of what makes football football yeah. because it's the most selfless position in any sport because your job is literally to hit somebody else so that way somebody else can get the glory mm -hmm. yeah like there's not a more selfless position out there yeah no like, it's, it's incredible and i think of guys like creed humphrey frank rag now yep um tyler linderbaum uh yeah. plays for the uh ravens uh yep. whitworth 
Wait, we're, we're talking about well, centers. He was, well, we're, he was saying centers. centers. Well, then even linemen in general, yeah, yeah. too. You had like Andrew Whitworth, you had Joe Thomas before mm -hmm. him. Yep. Like you have guys currently like Trent Williams, yep. Lane Johnson, like these guys um, who have just gained yeah. popularity because he's made playing offensive line cool. Yeah. Um, and singing. And, and, yeah, that's and true. I always oh, damn it, the eye of Sauron's appreciate back. that. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> um I think about Jason, especially as an Eagles fan, being a part of so many, he started retelling some uh, stuff he'd been through as the yeah. Eagles. He's really been through it all. It started out with Andy Reid as his head coach, mm -hmm. moved over, won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles at quarterback, mm -hmm. Doug Peterson. He was nearly the, cut at one point. Yeah, yeah. They flipped the entire roster around for the yeah. Super Bowl that they went to last year, mm -hmm. or I guess two years ago at this point, yeah. um, and has a whole different head coach. And yeah. to think about how many iterations of this team he's been with. Yeah. Um, he has a different hairstyle for every iteration. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's been it's been really an uh, awesome opportunity, and through that he's start like started his podcast with his brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. becomes some, one of the most famous uh, athletes in the, in the United in States. The world. Or, yeah, um, I guess in the United States. Yeah, yeah not the but world. <laughs> and um, of course, his like documentary, the Kelsey documentary. Oh my documentary, god! Yeah, his relationship with Kylie, his three yeah. kids, like everything about him, just been a, a pro. And to mm -hmm. see him retire is a shame. But I also know that whatever he's not going away from football no, no not he's not all. he'll he'll still be commentating maybe he might coach be yeah, an assistant coach for the yeah, eagles at some point coaching doing his podcast i personally i what i want him to do is do kind of like a john madden thing where he just like goes around to like every single fan base and like goes to their tailgates <laughs> and like just like has fun with them because i think that would be do awesome that. yeah I, I think a lot of people would watch that mm -hmm. um so Roger, any other thoughts on Jason Kelsey retiring? Sad day in Philadelphia. I mean, you guys said it all. I mean, I think the best thing I saw was on Philly Barstool, where you see a family bring a keg for him. Yep. And they pull their kid out of school. Yep. And like that's just the effect like some players have on cities, like mm -hmm. um, especially Philadelphia. Like you know, they're diehard fans in Philly, mm -hmm. and they will do anything. And it's generational too. Like you seeing kids being pulled out of school, going to the Novacare complex, parents like calling off of work just to send Jason Kelsey off. Like yeah. he's huge in the city, and you know what, Jurgens, you got a big role to fill, buddy. Oh, Jesus do Christ. not, do not let him down. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I was that. What you said reminded me of Kylie had said something about like epitomizing like love in Philadelphia. There's always this talk about like Philly as a whole, like being it's like, a tough a, city. It's a tough city, yeah, like yeah. politically, um, like crime and stuff like that. But yeah. also like Just sports general, fans. Yeah, sports fans are very um passionate there they they cause a little bit of havoc do things they probably shouldn't do throw exit cowboys um, fans but when you embrace the city and when you perform for the city they truly love you and mm -hmm. for a, an athlete like jason kelsey everybody in that city loves him i don't mm -hmm. think like there's very few athletes that truly embody their city more than jason kelsey does yes. like when you think of like philadelphia you think of like hard-nosed grit a little bit of an edge to them and just like goes to work i mean how many can like he, what he broke the record for most consecutive snaps for our most consecutive starts mm -hmm. uh, for an eagles yep. player he had like an ungodly amount of surgeries like uh, in those off seasons but never missed a game mm -hmm. like he was exactly exactly the right fit for philly and you know there's there's obviously some players that like you know you get icons like you get like a Derek jeter you get mm -hmm. like uh like a Jason Kelsey. I'm trying to think of like other, I mean, probably a Michael Jordan in Chicago. Too. Yeah, for sure. Even he had like, yeah. a, like a bit of that, like edge to him. Um, like you get like these very, there are now there's a lot fewer athletes mm. that really do stay in that one city and represent it. Like Dame represented Portland for a hot for minute. So long until, and, and yeah. they needed to go their separate ways, but like, and, and we think about it in terms of in football, it really feels like it's a quarterback a lot because, mm -hmm. um, they have they have all the control for the most part as they yeah. get paid. I mean, and even, it's a center, yeah. center, a center, which people yeah. sometimes consider center the like the least valuable position yeah. Yeah. on the offensive line to be good at. And Jason Kelsey did that. And I just think about like him moving out, like leading run block and just pancaking oh guys, God, and because yeah. well, he revolutionized the center position. He yeah. made it athletic. Yeah, like obviously there were centers before him mm -hmm. that were athletic. I don't want to claim like he completely changed it. They're a mailman. <laughs> they changed you know, the game, but, but he like really set a precedent for how athletic linemen can mm -hmm. impact like a run game, a pass game, a screen game. Like it like his impact on the game both on the field and off cannot be understood. No more tush push. Yeah, it's a it is a sad day like you said. Yeah. Camp Jurgens has a big role yeah. to fill. Yeah, he does. Um but they drafted him for this reason. Mm -hmm. It'll be curious to see, but it's a sad day in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um it'll yeah. be a sad upcoming season. I hope he can continue to stay involved in the organization. Yeah. Um but it's a I think he's going to take Stoutland's role when Stoutland retires. Yeah. I Might work yeah. up to uh, a line it. coach. Yeah. It is It is just like it's surreal. It yeah, yeah. it's like 
to see him not be on the field after yeah. like pretty much having him on the team the entire time watching sports yeah. will be weird. Um, but it's like it just has a well deserved retirement. Yeah. Um, after the year, especially like with all the injuries he's been oh, yeah. facing every year, and see how happy he was cheering on Travis oh, my God. during the Super yeah. Bowl run and everything yeah. like that. It's like. I just hope he has a good retirement so, and, and can enjoy his time with his kids. Absolutely. So please pull up Brady and come back. Please. Congrats. Please. Jason, you're okay. Please. Congratulations on it. Congratulations on, on a, a hall, easily first ballot Hall of Fame career, probably a top three center all time. Yeah. yeah. I say this in the nicest way possible. Please do not come back. Yeah. Give yourself a rest. <laughs> yeah, or a break. For, the yeah. God. <laughs> for the Eagles, uh, they for the Eagles, they want you to come back, yes. but for you and your children, don't. Yeah, but even like for the Eagles, they drafted Cam Jurgens for this reason. I know he's yep. been training with Kelsey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, slide him over and get a guard. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you have some guys on the bench and use yeah. them in the cap space over. Really, got to figure it out. Um, Draft some would've, people in the draft. We'll it it would have been really cool to have the run where you get Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox back, and go. Hey, yeah. one more, one yeah. more time um, but, with Chuck Kelsey it's involved. Right. But it's it's okay. Well, this yeah. was supposed to be the farewell tour, but well, I think Fletcher Cox is also apparently rumored to be retiring as well. But oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no. Uh, <laughs> farewell tour. No, don't say that. Don't say, uh, that. Don't say that. It's okay. BG's back though. Yeah. One more. That dude's never retiring. He's gonna die on the field. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so moving on from Jason Kelsey, we're gonna talk a little bit yes. about NFL free agency. On um, the fran- the franchise tag has kind of ended today. And then we had some extensions that go yeah. through. So I, I looked Brian up. Burns, man. Yeah, yeah was, a lot. Of, it was a lot of players that you would kind of expect to get franchise tagged, got franchise tagged. It wasn't anything insane that will be coming within the next couple weeks where people are then going to be traded on that franchise tag mm. if they're going to be doing that. But yeah, um, we'll start with some of the franchise tags. T Higgins being one. Yeah, that is a very big player to look for mm-hmm. if he's being traded or not, mm-hmm. um, because if he gets tagged this year, Higgins He'll probably be in free agency next year. So it's yep. a question of mm-hmm. the Bengals are going to go all in this year yeah. and kind of lose him next year for nothing or if they're going to trade him away. I, for one, think they should take a play out of the Chiefs book a little bit to get him. rid of him. Yeah, they should trade him. And like, not saying he isn't great for Cincy, but that for what they're trying to do, I don't think they're ready to make a Super Bowl run again. No. Yeah, and I think they could be. But even then, to say that you're going to go all in cap wise. When yeah. you got the Chiefs still at the top of their power, I think it's a little bit bold mm-hmm. because it kind of feels like you're all or nothing on this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was a fr- I was honestly a franchise tag I didn't necessarily expect because I thought they would have just uh, let him maybe just let him walk. I don't know what those trade. Well, you you uh, you sign and trade him. Kind yeah. Of thing, so yeah. so we'll we'll see where that goes. Let him cook. Um, Justin we'll Matabuke, um, defensive tackle for the uh, for the Ravens. Ravens. Yep. Solid franchise tag. They're going to need to extend him eventually. But, yeah, Is Patrick Queen still going to be there then? Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, his as much as Ravens fans would love to tell you, Patrick Queen is a solid run stopping linebacker. He is not one of the best linebackers in the league. I don't know <laughs> what they're smoking. Um, if Patrick Queen was smart, he would try to stick with the Ravens because I mean that's gonna be his best shot at anything is gonna be over there, even though how loaded the AFC is, unless the 49ers are hiring. Um, but I don't they're, think they they're would always be always hiring. They're always hiring to the defense. Um, but I mean Patrick Queen should stay there. I could see uh, like kind of another team trying to pick him up as like a run stopper. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Eagles, Eagles, Eagles. I mean, so we need like, linebackers, please. I mean, well, you need <laughs> send help. And, you need and a safety and a defensive back. Well, you need linebackers that can play both the run and the pass. Right. I know, but we'll take one. We don't have well, any who can play any. That's fair. That's fair. Don't worry. There you go. Zach Cunningham, trash. Nicholas Morrow, trash. You know what? Fine. Go get Patrick Queen. Okay. Go get him. Um, there you go. But yeah, that, that was a good franchise tag from the Ravens expected. Michael Pittman got franchise yeah. tagged, yeah. Um, which is definitely a big investment for mm. the Colts to make yeah. on a guy yeah. who... He's solid. He's, he's solid, fine. but he's, well, he's a wide receiver he's kind of, too. Yeah, he's a wide receiver too, um, probably in today's mm-hmm. league. And so I think you keep him around a year for Anthony yeah. Richardson, but you have to make the decision how much you give this guy yeah. next long, year, then, long like, term. Cause I, he's not a sign and trade guy. No, no, um, no. Because he's been with the organization for so long. Yeah. It's like you... you I think it was a good franchise tag. Mm. I think you're kind of kicking the can down the road a little bit. Yeah. Um, you're kind of praying that Anthony Richardson and him don't really get that good of a connection yeah. so you can actually pay him mm-hmm. because if they have a really good season together this next year, his uh, value is going to be a lot yeah. higher than it would have been this year. So, oh, uh, Bro's turning into T.Y. Hilton. He ain't ever going to leave. He ain't never going to leave. A sleeper is the Colts. Maybe go ahead and draft a receiver and try yeah. to be like, hey, if he's really good, yeah. maybe we just let Pittman walk. Because yeah, again, see. teams are going to have to be cap conscious right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Even though they did just get thirty million extra dollars, but whatever. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. especially with a guy like Anthony Richardson, which I know you're not trying to like look forward to his contract already, but, but you're like with how he looks now, you're looking like giving him a bag yep. in, in a few years. Exactly. So, 
Um, Josh Allen, a defensive end for the Jaguars, not quarterback Josh Allen, <laughs> yes, got yes. tagged by the uh, Jaguars. It's, it's rumored that they're going to be extending him on a, yeah. on a deal yeah, coming up, but they couldn't get to an agreement. Yeah. So I think they're, they're franchising him uh, this year, and then they'll they'll sign an extension, mm-hmm. which will be then for the next couple yeah. of years yep. or something. You don't want to lose Josh Allen if you're the Jaguars. No, no he's, it, he's a very solid yes. cornerstone piece. Um, he's the, not, Jag, the Jags defense already needs a lot of work. They need a lot of help, and I think you know he's a very he's a very like quiet, humble kind of guy. Like doesn't really like do like just kind of does his job sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's not like a top tier edge rusher, but he's still a very very solid edge rusher. If you could pair him with another young guy, kind of like the, like. I don't know somebody. I mean, they probably won't get like a Dallas Turner coming out of the mm-hmm. draft, but like somebody like that, yeah. where it's like, okay, you bo- you have just two really solid defensive ends on either side, you're you're good because they also have Trayvon Walker there yep. still. Yeah. So, so as, as an interior guy, which he's actually been getting better as much as we love to cook the <laughs> yeah. Jaguars for quite possibly one of the dumbest first overall picks yeah, ever, for sure. <laughs> but he's been getting he's been getting like better throughout his career. So if you have then you have Josh Allen, you have Trayvon Walker, you would have somebody like Dallas Turner on the other edge. You got a very solid front four there. Yep, hundred percent. Um, Dalton Schultz got a three year contract extension. I think it's very, Pro got overpaid. Fit. He no, did. he didn't. I I think he was absolutely huge for CJ Stroud's development and consistency oh, wait, this year. Oh, bias because of my bet. Yeah, That's you right. idiot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because you got mad that he didn't get a like. Yeah, he didn't, he get, didn't a get fifty-five yards and a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, he was great this past season for CJ Stroud. He's that safety blanket yep. yes. kind of tight end. That he can always chuck the ball to, and I think making that commitment to Schultz for three yeah. more years, and that's right before Stroud is going to get paid, is yep. like CJ. We're giving you a safety blanket. We understand the receivers could be a little like the receivers Wishy-washy, were good, but they're like, first whatever. year receivers. Yeah, yeah. Who knows how they'll come out next yeah. year? Some injuries, but we're like, hey, we're going to give you that tight end, yeah, and make sure he's consistent. I thought it was just a great, not that it was like a hard decision to make, but a great no. resign and a great because yeah, what is it? Three years, thirty six, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, something just like a very like not breaking the bank contract, but like a very like he earned that. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like this is a good contract for both parties. Yeah. Like, good for him. Legarius well, Sneed got franchise tagged. And He's I think, gone. <laughs> you think they're trading him? Yep. I think they're trading him. Okay. Because they're going to keep Chris Jones over him. Yeah. I had the thought of, I think they can take both. No, no. There's no way. <laughs> Adios. I, will, I just wonder if the Chiefs go, we're going all in. I know it's not their approach, but we go all in for three. And they take Sneed and let him walk after the year. And it, it's sad, but you let him walk. You absorb Chris Jones's contract and just say, we are going to go all in on three. We know it's going to hurt a little bit when we lose Snead after for nothing after a year. It feels very not Chiefs like, but they're also in a territory where they're going for they're going for history. They're going for history. And I, I was wondering if that's where this contract Maybe. comes in. I think I think what they're going to end up doing is they're tagging Snead to trade him and then they're going to sign Chris Jones. Because if you're going to choose one or the other, I think you have to go with Chris Jones. As good as Legereus Sneed is, Chris Jones has been with that organization for so long, and he's such like an anchor on that defense. And with how you've seen Trent McDuffie develop, and obviously you can't just like pull a great corner out of yep. every single draft, but like you have now precedent of like, look, we can get these talented players and develop them into mm. literal first team All Pro players. I guess what the question is: What is Sneed worth? A second. I don't know. Depends how the Chiefs can fleece the team. I could see them get, not getting a first this year. I could see one first, like in mm-hmm. an upcoming draft. Okay. I, see that. I just, I feel like part of them is like first is a lot. It's just we have like I think with the Chiefs, like you're going for three. And oh you, no, no, I think if they want to go for three, I think you keep. Yeah, three. absolutely. Well, I think they want to go for three. Well, obviously yeah. they want to go for three. But um, I'm just like a little bit like if they get rid of Snead now. Their defense is worse, and I know it's setting up for long-term success, but I almost wonder if you just deal with that this year, or if you just try to get a second this year and say, hey, we're going to hopefully draft a guy right out of the draft. But then here's my thing. This is like, just like the Tyreek Hill trade, where they then pushed their ships in and said, well, now we'll invest in the defense. Do they then, they then flip it? And reinvest in the offense? Reinvest in the offense. Yeah. It's an interesting point. And there well, was, Stephon Diggs is going to the Chiefs. And I would say a lot of a lot of receivers in that uh, in the combine. This is a combine talk. Now we're really in the weeds. Oh, boy, um, performed really well. The guys like Xavier Worthy, who ran at all all time speed oh, in the in the forty. Um, this That's is something that they could get an early second round pick for someone like Snead, where you say, "All right, you got Somebody's late first, fallen, yeah. late first, early second. Yeah, draft a defender, draft an offensive guy. Hey, we're gonna get we're gonna reload a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I do think there's a slight chance that they bring Snead back and just say. 
we're getting three. Screw it. We're, we're going, for, we're three. going for three. Yeah. Yeah. Because the the one thing is is that I think both Chris Jones and Snead want to get paid big, which they deserve to be. Yeah. But I don't know how they do that. Yep. But if they figure it out. It's scripted, and the league is scripted. Yep. So. <laughs> um, the Chiefs also signed uh, Matt Areza, who was a punter <laughs> for New Mexico, right? A uh, punter for New Mexico yep. that was uh, drafted by the Bills. Yep. Um, cut. Then uh, was cut after allegations. The, after a lot of horrific allegations were thrown. Which his way. That, 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 they didn't beat. They were all proven to be untrue. Yeah. Well, yeah, it wasn't just like, oh, well, it was settled out of court. It was proven to be untrue. Um, he wasn't even at the party that they were yeah. alleged to be at. There's like a whole. We won't get into yeah. it on this mm-hmm. podcast because it's insane. If you want to look legal, it up, mumbo jumbo. Well, not even just that. Just how awful it's all, it's, the yeah, it's, accusations it's, were. But we'll, it. if you want to look it up, you can look it up. But readers beware. Oh my god, this dude has a cannon of a leg. Yes, and it's funny because the Chiefs actually have a really good punter right now. Yeah, isn't it, uh, Tommy Townsend? Yeah. Townsend. And now he's gonna sit behind him, and this dude could like rip seventy yard punts. You think yeah. you can get a fourth or a fifth for Tommy Townsend to a team, dude? I swear to God, if they trade a punter <laughs> and get at minimum a fourth round pick, I will scream. <laughs> you never. Know. I just I'm happy that he, after kind of being blackballed from the league, because yeah. obviously the allegations were out there, mm-hmm. um, and the Bills felt like they needed to. But after like you, you hate to see it, kind of like a giant depth situation where you see someone like take a step back in their career because of some allegations that they had to go beat. Um, and then to go to a professional team like the Chiefs and kind of get to sit oh, yeah. there and he'll be shielded from a lot of noise. And oh, yeah. I get to sit there. I think it's a great opportunity yeah. for him. Because of all teams, the Chiefs are going to be able they mm-hmm. defend their own kind of thing. Like yep. They always stand up for each other. I mean, hell, look at what, like with, with Mahomes, like he never bagged on his receivers once. He might have been screaming at the refs yep. at one point <laughs> and was pissed at his receivers. And for, a team, but... and for a team you know does the homework necessary oh, yeah. and says like, They've cleared this guy. You don't yeah. like you feel like some teams who hire like who sign criminals and you're like Deshaun Watson. Yeah. <laughs> like the Brown, like you go to Brown's like, oh gosh, here we go. The Raiders, the Cowboys. You know? Yeah, all of them. But um, with the Chiefs, you're like, okay, you got the got got a right culture around them. Because I mean, hell, look at somebody like Travis Kelsey, who had a lot of extracurricular stuff, a lot of question marks about his character mm-hmm. coming in, and Andy Reid was like, listen. You're gonna listen to me, or you're off this team. So yep. if anybody's gonna keep somebody on the straight and narrow, it's it's the Chiefs for sure. Mike Evans, huge contract yes. extension with the yes. Bucks, two years. Yes. I, he's not going to the Chiefs. I'm thank God. I question if this is really a good move for the Bucks. I don't know if it's a good move for the Bucks because I think Mike as love Mike Evans, great player. Mike Evans. Why are we not ring chasing? <laughs> I know you've been in Tampa your whole career. And I know you said, oh, well, I want to be with a quarterback that shows like how good I am and whatever. Mm-hmm. Tampa's going to be solid. They're going to win the probably the uh, NFC South again. They're winning their division. I, I, it's still like they barely won it last year. It's like you know, <laughs> you're hoping to win the well, division. The Saints haven't done anything crazy right well, now. I, 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 no, no but the Falcons, Falcons are going to be better. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Everyone's going to be better. The Panthers are terrible, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, but the Panthers are probably going to be better than they were last year. I don't know. Baker's Hopefully. looking good. Who knows? Maybe they'll just run back the South for what the fifth year in a row. Yeah, I just think like I just think for a franchise, if your move is just to run back the AFC South, you're going to get first NFL. rounded. Yes, and you're going to lose the the Lions and lose the. Um, it's like, what's the point? Yeah, and lose the 49ers. and yeah, it's I like, think what are you building? Yep, and I like, think for the yeah. like, I wish they could just trade him because I think Mike Evans deserves a chance to play on a great team, mm. and I think. You could easily get a first for him. Yeah, too. and I like, think the Bucks deserve. What about the Chiefs? Well, Evans isn't ring him. chasing and because he has one, so now he's just like, I don't know what's going through his head. Maybe he just wants to finish his career out in Tampa. Which is bad. no, and listen, there's a, great, a lot of perks, right? No cold weather. Yeah, um, probably likes it down there. No state probably has state a, his tax. house and family's down there now yeah, too. Like, yep. like so there's a lot of reasons to stay. I get, yeah. I get, and the also loyalty just the loyalty to the mm-hmm. team. Like they drafted you, and I and I get it. But for the Bucks, I feel like this is where you got to make a hard decision and say you got to invest. We're trading. Or we're just going to let you walk if we need to because mm-hmm. we need to look forward to like at our future. They need to rebuild. Yeah. Like they, I know that they've got some, they've got a lot of young talent, but they need more. Yep, they need Agreed. more young. Talent. I mean, Evans is reaching the tail end of his career. Yeah. He's he's getting older. Maybe this is like you know one last stint with them, one last contract. I I think this situation. Would, I think after this, he'll probably the after these last two seasons, I think he'll probably retire. Yeah, 
hopefully he doesn't do what Julio doesn't just hop from team to team. Yeah. Hey, he's been great for the Eagles. Yeah, he yeah. caught two touchdowns, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll throw him a screen on third and 20 and have Devontae Smith block for him. Smart. All right. Devontae all right. Smith breaks all of his ribs and then yep. Julio gets yeah, yeah. curb stomped. <laughs> Can't believe like we really, Kansi we really coming across had a the field. the old playoff game where Devontae Smith was really wide receiver one and we lost to the Bucks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Antoine Winfield gets tagged. Just uh, it was a guy that I didn't think was realistic, but I was like, God, the Eagles, it, yeah, like, I was like, <laughs> God, please, <laughs> please, please. Um, great, oh great tag God. for the Bucks again. Yeah, kind of tough yeah. because you don't really feel like where they're going. But Antoine Winfield's been such a good player since he's entered yeah, the league. He's another anchor on the defense. Like, yeah, got to stay. You want you're not going to get rid of them. Ryan Burns gets tagged. Free my, Free my Free dog. Him. Let him out. <laughs> I, I saw this and I was like, poor Brian Burns. Get him out. <laughs> he is so good at his position and he is just in he's pur- ever purgatory. I mean, we're talking so about him, solid. but he's overlooked in every like defensive end conversation because he's like in the worst franchise. Because you put him on any decent defense and he's so much better. I know. Yeah. Uh, Brian Burns, if I were you, hold out. Just hold out, dude. Just hold That's out. the only way you're escaping. I'm Go hoping the team trades him. Yeah. Like, like if you're the Panthers and you're rebuilding does to it, build around Bryce Young, okay, trade him for picks. Does this sound overkill? If I was like, the Eagles trade Redick. Okay. And then trade their 22nd for Burns and extend him or something That's like that. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot for him? That's a lot. I saw Redick's an all-pro and he's been very solid well, for okay. us. Well, okay. He was not an All Pro. He was a Pro Bowler. Let's make that very clear. He was an All Pro this year? <laughs> no, this year. not this okay, year. He was a, not he, even close. My bad. My bad. He was an All Pro. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, he was not even close to an All Never Pro mind. this year. Came out there and had a better year than him. He was Fair not enough. close. Well, that's because of Sean Desai's defense, but we're not going to get into story. that. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm just trying to figure out ways that you can navigate getting Brian Burns off this terrible off this, team. Off this team. And I mean, hold a gun to the Panthers' owner and say, release you know, him. Yeah. Please. Yeah, I mean, Dave Tepper's got to go. He's yeah. he's the next he's the next owner on the chopping block. I yeah, think yeah. he's going to get forced out, I think, eventually. Because the Panthers fall from glory is insane. You have that one season with Cam and then just... Yeah, MVP Cam. Just downfall. 15 and 1. And then just... <laughs> Peyton Manning broke y'all. Yeah. No, yeah. Von Miller. Yeah, Von Miller, Von Miller yeah. did. Oh, yeah, that was Von Miller. In the, in the last franchise tag was Jalen Johnson, cornerback for the Bears. Um, yeah. He, he had a really good year, especially in the second very half. Very underrated. Yeah, very underrated year. And so I was happy to see him get tagged, get his money a little bit. Um, hopefully they can work towards a long-term extension. Because for a Bears team that hopefully is going to draft Caleb Williams and some other talent, mm-hmm. you hope that he's kind of a piece that um, kind of grows with the team exactly. as they maybe make the first yeah, playoff yeah. run. Um, but Peter, we're going to talk about who wasn't tagged. Yeah, I know. Who was not tagged. Both Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney were not tagged. Which, I want to be very clear, I think I know what the Giants are doing. I think. Um, where because what actually happened last year is that the Giants franchise tagged Saquon uh, almost immediately, and that kind of pissed him off because he wasn't even able to like test free agency and like see what his value at the market would be. And then um, instead of like placing the transition tag, which is like the same thing as it's a very similar concept to a franchise tag, but it allows players to like see what teams offer. And then come back to the original team and then say like, "Hey, this is what they're offering. Can you counter it?" Which is the what the Patriots do with Kyle Duggar, exactly. And um, they didn't even allow him to do that. Which I think what that's what the Giants are doing um, because they want to sign. Because if they're going to sign Saquon Barkley, they're not going to sign him to a franchise tag. Like they're not going to do that two years in a row. Like they're going to sign him to an extension. Um, and it's the same thing with Xavier McKinney. Like they're not just going to sign him for one year. Like they're going to sign him for like multiple years. So like it makes sense why you wouldn't sign those franchise tags. It scares the hell out of me because now I, I know that the Seahawks literally just cut both of their starting safeties and Julia Love, who literally used to play for the Giants, is on the Seahawks. And I swear to <laughs> Christ, if the Seahawks take both of the starting safeties for the New York and, Giants... And Gino played for the Giants, right? Well, yeah. G- well Gino played well. for the Giants for like a season. He ruined Eli Manning's starting career. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, ben McAdoo ruined that. True. True. Do um, not blame Gino for that pick, that well, choice. Yeah, G- Gino also had his jaw broken by a Jets player or whatever. That's true. Um, but... <laughs> Um, I mean, the Jets had some resentment against Gino. Whatever. But um, but anyway, if the Seahawks take Xavier McKinney, I... You might have to cut this out. I'm going to firebomb that stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that in. Okay. Not it's all air joking. Not it's all air yeah. in, in Minecraft, in Minecraft, in a video We game. build a MetLife replica. We build a 12th man 
replica, the Loud House. We we're gonna burn it to the ground. Um, I think the Loud House is Indianapolis. I don't even know what the name of the Seahawks Stadium is. I don't care because I'm yeah. burning it to the ground. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's terrifying, but I think I understand what the Giants' plan is. I would love if both Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney came back. If I could only choose one, I would choose Xavier McKinney because he's younger. He's playing a more position of need. I love, love, love Saquon Barkley, but running back is a luxury position. The Giants can't afford a luxury position at this point. Um, and I think he would look great in a Houston Texans uniform. Yeah. I also think with Saquon Barkley, I just for the Giants, it feels like they're kind of holding on to something a little bit from yeah. like the past where they when they drafted him. I feel like this team is a lot he's different. He's like the last kind of piece besides i mean daniel jones was also like the old regime kind of thing but he i feel like was much more of a transition yeah because it's like he was just so young in there like same thing with dexter lawrence where it's like well he just is playing out of his mind and at the end of the day he's a quarterback he's like a quarterback. that's what happened yeah, quarterbacks break happens. the rules of a lot of other conventions yeah. and yeah. i think for the giants being able to finally move on from saquon barkley and say we need to build this team for the future for the future stop yeah. with this whole like what is Saquon going to do in the offseason injury yeah. prone trade just mm-hmm. let him walk yeah and mutually part ways yeah. and let him go have please go to the texans yeah it's, for it'd love be of God. a great spot for him i don't you f-ing dare go to dallas i swear <laughs> to all that's holy if you go to dallas i will lose my pulls <laughs> a reverse to marco murray and just leaves. dude i will lose it that would be awful. I will be so pissed. But of course, granted, I'm not going to be mad at you as a person because if you got to do that for the money, I understand. Whatever. But fire, firebomb AT and T Stadium too. Well, that that's not even Minecraft. Regardless. I'm just doing. That. <laughs> I'm just doing that. Um, yeah, Jerry Jones can catch these <laughs> hands. I'm sorry, I'm swearing so much right now. I'm just thinking about him in a Dallas Cowboys jersey. Makes me want to both <laughs> projectile vomit and fist fight everybody on the Cowboys. I think we need to get Stefan Diggs, Trayvon Diggs, and Quandre Diggs all on the same team. <laughs> How? <laughs> well, the Seahawks released him. Oh my god! And Stefan Diggs is always disgruntled. He's, oh yeah, god. just Stefan Diggs should really have a disgruntled moment of the week segment. He really should. Yeah. All right, yeah. that's that's the podcast this week. Yeah. yeah. First outside episode. It yeah. rained for a little bit, yeah, but yeah, the rain I went away. Yeah. Um, so we made it. Of course, a little dark, but started yeah. when it was light. We got some mood light. Yeah, enjoying yeah. the warm weather until yeah. it rains all day well, tomorrow. Of course, again. <laughs> and back to back to the rain. But <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, there will be no podcast episode next week. We will be busy in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Busy, yeah. <sighs> Casino. Yeah. Yeah. If you see a podcast episode next week, then something went horribly Please, wrong. Please, yeah. for the love of God, start DMing us and tell, tell us to take it down. Yeah. Because <laughs> oh God, yeah, not, I don't even yeah, want to know what's on not, there. But we'll have a very exciting episode yes. the following week when we recap the entire yep. trip, talk about what we did. Um, maybe and I then, might come back with money. Maybe I won't. And Who then knows? hopefully we can cut out some segments. Maybe for, Raj will come back or not. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully we can cut out some segments out of post for the week. But if you made it this far in the episode, please like, comment, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It helps out our channel a lot as we try to get to 100 subscribers. Yes. And we will see you next time on the Coconut Curry Podcast. Cam Jurgens will be a Hall of Famer. Save hey, remember kidding, please. <laughs>